Sorry, I had to say something before entering in. But it's good that it has happened because now I have to tell you some things important in life. And that is especially for ladies, I have to tell this. I've noticed, uh, of course I'm also a woman, that women have certain water powers of crying, weeping, and thinking they are very miserable and making everybody miserable. This is their power. I've noticed this. I mean, this song is the worst song you could sing on any day whatsoever. But it has come into somebody's head, it's very negative. And not only that, but it shows a person who can never be happy and doesn't want anybody to be happy. So inside every woman, there is a motherhood, there's great capacities, sacrifice, everything is there. So with that, they also should know they are left-sided. And our joy, about which we talk, within our heart, has to manifest outside. People should see that we are joyous, that we are happy people, that we are not like others who start crying for small things. Like when my father died, I was surprised that suddenly I became thoughtless, absolutely thoughtless. For about three days I was thoughtless. Neither the thought of pain or thought of unhappiness or anything came up, but just thoughtless. And everybody was surprised because I looked after him and, I mean, he was very attached to me, very fond of me, everything was there. But they were surprised, how is it I became suddenly thoughtless? So if you are a Sahajogini, then at the time of crisis, you should become thoughtless, that's one of the signs. I have seen with myself, if there is any crisis in the family, I just become thoughtless. That means what? That God just takes you in your problems, he puts his hand, he puts his protection and he takes you out of it and makes you absolutely thoughtless. And in that thoughtless awareness, you discover what is right, what is wrong. So even in crisis, this thoughtless awareness is all the time extremely alert, it becomes much more alert than normal. That's the sign of a Sahajogi and a sign of Sahajogini. My job is to encourage you, to tell you about your inner subtleties, your beauty. Now, do you know what beautiful thing you are? Let us talk about our inner beauty. What are we? Are we all these mad people? Are we all these people who are all the cry time are miserable? Or are we all these people who are always fighting, those who are hankering after things, who, whom this matter dominates? No. We are the Spirit. We are the Spirit, we are the reflection of God Almighty, which is purity, which is truth, which is knowledge. We are that. We are not like ordinary people. How can we live on that level? Only if you are possessed, if you had a bad guru or something like that, maybe you are going like a yo-yo, going up and down, up and down, up and down. But those who have crossed all those limits, have reached that state, should value that they are the Spirit. So many spirits here sitting, reflecting God Almighty. I'm such a proud mother. 
And all of you are capable of enlightening so many people in this world. But the beauty within you is that you are absolutely independent of anybody else. You depend only on your, upon yourself, upon the source of your spirit, the joy of your spirit. You don't expect others to give you joy. Supposing somebody tomorrow comes and abuses me, I'll say, all right, doesn't matter. It never touches me because I, I am with myself. He is saying these things, he will suffer or not suffer, that's not my record. When you start depending on upon yourself, just imagine a house which is standing on rocks, like that you are. Try to feel it, feel the rock within you. Try to understand. We are not going to behave like other people. It's all right, people who have built their houses on sands have to worry. Not we, we have built on rocks. So we have to be very courageous, we have to be very bold. At the same time, extremely humble. When the tree is laden with fruits, it bends down. So we worship the Mother Earth, we worship the sun, we worship the moon, we worship everything that is around us which has helped us, we worship our parents, everyone. But above all, we worship ourselves. Because we are worshipable. Now all of you have become saints. That doesn't mean that you develop beards and have all funny dresses and all that. Nothing of that. You have saint because inside you there is the fragrance of beautiful fragrance of your lotus. That's the spirit. This is the lotus you have made for me here. Such a beautiful lotus, I am sitting in a beautiful lotus. In the same way it's reflected in your heart, it's a beautiful lotus. Feel that lotus, how beautiful, how delicate it is. It's pink because pink is the lotus which invites everyone. Sign of generosity, of invitation. Pink color attracts all kinds of insects, everybody. So, lotus is pink and it in invites everything, open to everything, not frightened of anything. But it comes out of the mire, comes out of absolutely horrible ponds. There are lots of worms going round it, all right? But it emits the fragrance and makes the whole pond so beautiful. That's what you are, wherever you will be, you can create that beauty, you can flow that beauty. You can make people see what a spiritual person is. You are the reflector of Sahaja Yoga, not me. You have to reflect Sahaja Yoga. But such people are always in joy. and wisdom. Sri Ganesha is the giver of wisdom. Wisdom, how to behave at what time, how to say at what time, how far to go with everything, it just should become innate. 
Sahaj, you don't have to work it out, but should know. Now I'm a Sahajogini. Every morning you should tell yourself, I'm a Sahajogini. So how far I should go? How should I behave? I should behave? What should be my attitude? All this can be very easily understood if you develop this lotus of wisdom. How does the lotus come up? There is a seed, it sprouts. That's how the wisdom... There is already the seed within you, all of you have got, and now it has started opening because you are realized souls. Allow your wisdom to take over. So, how do you do it? There's one way I would say, supposing mother had this problem, what she would have done? Very good idea. How she would have dealt with it? You may then say that, oh, I don't, we don't understand mother's style, so she's full of tricks. Correct, I am. But there's a very simple way of doing it. Okay, I surrender it to my wisdom. And the wisdom itself that is in you is active, it will work. This point also we should understand. Wisdom within you is active. There was one gentleman working at the airport in London. He's a Sahaja Yogi, but he doesn't come to the collective, he has no time. So somebody <clears throat> said something harsh to him. Went home and he said that, it's not good, he said to me, you see, after all, I'm a Sahaja Yogi. And next day, he heard the fellow has fallen from his uh, bike. The gentleman might not have understood that because he said all these things, that's why this has happened to me. But he knew, because deities are all with you. So in wisdom you understand that all the deities are just with you. And whatever happens to you, they are before you. Nobody can harm you, nobody can touch you. You are so protected. Lotuses are not protected. You are so protected that anybody tries to harm you, immediately there's protection. Also your own protection is there, as I said, that you jump into thoughtless awareness. We harm ourselves more than anybody else can sometimes. One friend of mine I knew, she was from very childhood, she was like that, always crying for everything, always she used to cry, for nothing at all, because she was such a spoiled child that she used to always cry. And I was surprised to see at a very young age she became blind. I said, how did you become so blind? She had to use a very thick glass and all that. She said, I used to cry so much, you remember? I said, that I remember, but did you cry oh, even after school? Yes, I was always crying like this. So it's kind of a personality you develop that I, I like that, I just cry. Well, why not develop a personality that I am always in joy? Anything I see, I feel joyous. <coughs> Anything I hear, I feel joyous. Then this lotus, of your fragrance will improve. And then activity of your wisdom will be <coughs> that you will take all <coughs> that is very beautiful, <coughs> easily <coughs> you'll get all that is very satisfying, very joyous. It's kind of an activity of this wisdom within you, which just leads you 
to people who are extremely nice, to situations which are very beautiful, where you discover nice things. Or to such beautiful creations that you would never expect to see. It's very, very important to understand that you tell me, Mother, this miracle happened, that miracle happened. It's nothing. It's your own wisdom, your own spirit is working it out. You don't have to do anything. Only thing you have to remember that you are a Sajogini and your character should be that of a Sajogini, that your ideas should be that of a Sajogini. Same with Sajogis. Sajogis, being men, they don't show much, but there are certain other ways of showing his temper. They get into tempers. And sometimes the tempers are so much that you just start looking, what's the matter with the person? One side the tempers, another side the crime. I mean, in between what remains, I don't know. Both things are absolutely not needed. You have to correct people to say things. Just now I had to say something, I've said it, finished. But it's not anger. It just, I have to act. The difference is like this, I'm not involved in it. Even if I cry, I'm not involved, I'm just crying. Even if I'm angry, I'm not really angry. I'm just trying to be angry in an acting. That's what happens. You do not get involved into it. But if you get involved into your anger, then the joy is finished, completely finished. Some people think also that if you are joyous, you have to be very serious. Not at all. What is there to be serious? What is so serious in this world? Everything is stupidity. I don't find anything serious in this world. And I can't keep serious for more than three minutes. Sometimes people take advantage of that, but what can I do? That's my nature. What is so serious? You don't have to create sun, you don't have to create moon, you don't have to create Mother Earth. What's so serious? What great jobs have you to do? Everything is there for you. Just enjoy. What is there to be so serious? Some people, you know, try to impress also by their seriousness. Once I saw a lady standing very seriously thinking, I said, what, have you, what is the problem? I don't know how to broom this thing, so I don't have a broom. I said, such a big problem is there as if the, the heavens are falling. Doesn't matter, today you don't do it. You can do it tomorrow, what is so important? I mean, if you don't have something, it's all right. No, 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 I must do it, you see, I'm very house proud. I said, that's the main problem, which is serious. So because you suffer from some serious, stupid problems, that's why you become serious. And by becoming serious, if you think your problems will be solved, they will not. At the same time, I must tell you, we should not be frivolous. We should not be vulgar and not frivolous. That's not... See these flowers, look at them, they're shaking with my vibrations. But look at them in their own dignity. They are going to die tomorrow, they are not bothered. As long as they are all right there in their own place, giving you pleasure and happiness, finished. What is the use of a light? Let us see as a light as we are, to give the light. So we are here to give joy, happiness to everyone, to make everyone happy. There are so many ways of making others happy. 
And for that we have to learn also. So many things we have to learn how to make others happy. And then when you make them happy, then you feel that joy within us. Oh, that's so happy. See their happiness, then only this lotus opens out much more, like a ripple moves and moves to the end of the shores and then from the shore it returns back to In the same way, when your joy reaches the joy of others, then the ripples that come up make a beautiful pattern of your life. Just think of such situations where you did something good to others, been very nice to others, and then you found the joy in that person and how that joy came back to you. Think of that pattern that you felt so subtly in your life, how it is built in. Whenever you think of that time or that moment or that area, whole picture comes to you. And you think, what a time! But that time is eternally within him, all the time. And that's why is Diwali is so important. You are all, as I said, you are my light. And the light is there, which is an eternal light. These lights will be finished. We'll have to light them every year, not you people. You have eternal light. And this light is going to spread joy. What's the problem of this world? The whole problem, you take it. There's no joy. Simple as that. There's no joy. If they had joy, they would not have done all these nonsensical things. There's no joy. When you have joy, you don't want to fight, you don't want to do anything that is harmful, you don't want to say anything harsh to anyone. Not only that, but you do not want to have uh, something that will spoil this Mother Earth or which will bring ecological problem. No, you just don't want it. Don't want to do anything because it harms others. People feel unhappy about it, whether it is here, India, anywhere. You just feel that, why should I do such a thing which is not so congenial to others? I mean, it's not joy-giving. So when you have joy, you have to be joy-giving. And if you are not joy-giving, that means there's something lacking in your Sahaja Yoga and that's why we have to come up now. We have to become Sahaja Yoginis and Sahaja Yogis. That is joy-giving society. We can change our name if you like, if not Sahaja Yoga is good, Joy-Giving Association. Now also we should find out what kills the joy, that's important. What kills the joy? First I said we must have wisdom. Wisdom means that it gives you detachment. Detachment from all that is selfishness, self-centeredness, self-obsession, ego, all connected with self. Can you imagine? Selfish, the self, means the spirit. Selfishness is what? Is the one that completely darkens the self. Because you think of yourself, your children, your family, that's all, at the most. Even that sometimes not just, sometimes it's only yourself. And when you start 
thinking like that, and when you start becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, the lotus collapses. But to think about others is so great. In my case it's different. If I think about myself really, I tell you, I feel very happy, nice, joyous, I must tell you, I must confess. But some people I think of immediately, my chakra start catching. And I feel, oh God, why did I think of such a person? I mean the chakra start moving fast for that person. Because this body is so generous that you can't imagine, even if I see somebody, suddenly the chakra start working for that, as if I'm responsible for everybody's chakras which are gone off, which I am in a way, but to such an extent. But still, I think about people who are in trouble, about every one of you. Why? Why do I think? Because I know that if I can improve your chakras, you'll be happy. I don't have to logically go to that point, but just my body knows it. It works. It works and feels very happy. When I see somebody getting a Realization, it's such a great joy to me. When I see somebody being relieved of the problem, such a joy to me, because joy-giving is the character, nature of Spirit. If you do not allow your Spirit to fulfill its own nature and its own uh, character, Spirit is not going to manifest itself. So you are the vehicle, you are the lamp, you can say, as far as body, mind is concerned. But this light of Spirit, if it has to manifest, then it has to be of a very unique type that it emits all its light outside. It gives light to others. And this light giving quality, you have to improve. Gradually, you'll be surprised only if you try in your life, in your relationships, in your endeavors, to give light to others to make their lives better, not to show off, not to be egoistic, but in a very loving, beautiful manner. You'll really understand that you are the Spirit, because Spirit loves, it loves. And in love, you're forgiving, very forgiving. Sometimes, you know, leaders get angry with me that I'm rather forgiving. What can I do? That's my nature, but I can't help it. Because I love, you know. If you love a person, you do forgive. You don't feel bad. Not to forgive is difficult, but to forgive is the best. At least when you forgive, there's no headache for you. So this love, which is joy, actually I think when this love melts and flows like a river and gives nourishment to all the surrounding trees on the shores, that is the time is the completion of the individuality or a personality of that love. And that's the time it feels fulfilled. It's not just that you have a light in the corner 
But it has to flow, it has to move, it has to nourish. Love is not something dead, like a stone, when it melts, it encompasses everything and everything becomes very beautiful with that. So, you have to first understand that life is for giving joy to others, because you are now saints and your light has to give joy. Little bit you have to bear, yes, you have powers to bear, you have all the powers. And so I wish you good luck for the next year and great prosperity. May God bless you.